Well, let me just quit that. How are we, everyone? Uh, I've uh, got to wear my hat today. Oh, let me just fix this up here. And why is that still coming through? Must have been still playing it somewhere. Let me quit. Quit time. Uh, quit. Yeah, I've got to wear my hat. I've had a few uh, sun, well, they're not sun, they're not cancers, but they're, uh, you know, these <laughs> sun sort of pre-cancers, so I'll get them burnt off, but my head looks a mess, so Kerry said, you've got to wear a hat today. I wore one yesterday in the video I put up, too, um, so, oh, here we go. I think I look pretty cool with this hat on anyway. The guys from America would know this, because I wore this all the time when I was in the States. Let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Mmm. -hmm. Oh, so good. Corona. It's lunchtime here. <laughs> oh, let me show you uh, some of the images that I took. Oh, before we do that, I'll say hello in the chat because I want to show you some of the A6, uh, A7S3 stills I've taken recently. Oh, amazing. It's unbelievable, that camera. So let's have a look. So who's in at the moment? So we've got Robert. Oh, by the way, sorry, I couldn't make it last week. I was just too busy with weddings and stuff. I've got a wedding tomorrow. That's why I'm a day earlier today um, because uh, I'm shooting on the weekend. So uh, weddings have picked up again, which is great. I'll be back the following week at the normal time, though. So it'll be Friday night US, Saturday in Australia. Um, so Robert's here as well. Um, he's saying he's going to watch it in the morning, which is great. 
Uh, Michael was here saying first and last as well. Uh, RVG1 says, going to catch you live. Hello from Plantation, Florida. Still waiting for my Sony Alpha 1 to ship. Well, I thought they were all shipping now. You know what? I did organize a shoot with Greg for Sunday, but I can't do it now because it's actually... <laughs> You're going to laugh, but it was it's our anniversary, and I forgot. And um, it's our 40th year, actually, so it's a big one. And um, so I said to Kerry, oh, I've got this shoot um, on Sunday organised. We're going to, uh, say, use the A1 and, and review it. And I got rolling eyes. You know the eyes I'm talking about, don't you? Well, I got those, and I thought, oh, something's wrong here. <laughs> And then I clicked. I thought, oh, no, it's our, uh, it's our wedding anniversary. So I had to call him up and postpone it. So we will do it, but it might be a couple of weeks away because Easter's just after that as well. Uh, I'm dying to try it because I want to test it against the A9. Uh, things like dynamic range and all these other things. So stay tuned. Uh, I will be doing it, but it's just a matter of when. Um, and by the way, why I talk about that too, we are having uh, – we're going to Sydney uh, on the – twenty. I think it's the 24th and 25th. Um, so I would love to do a meetup with uh, some of the Sydney people. So if you're watching this, uh, just comment down below. But I will be um, putting out sort of a thing where we can get a little meetup or something like that um, on one of the days that I'm there. I'm there for two nights. Uh, so it'd be great uh, if I could meet some of you up in New South Wales and Sydney. So I'll, I'll put out a caller for that. So it's the 25th anyway of next month, 24th, 25th, I think. Um what else have we got? Good morning from Barry uh, there as well. Um, Mark said 63 native lenses now, uh, but where is the 100 if 1.4? I know it's crazy. Raymond also said uh, Dave could uh, could get all these lenses and decorate his gimbal trees behind him. I love it. It's raining lenses, Heath said. Um, I'm surprised you haven't got your A1 yet, though. Boy, that's a hell of a um, waiting. Um, making a habit of a few late beers and joining here. I love you. I love your view because you seem like just like everyone else and not caught up in the YouTube fame. Yeah, it's just me, mate. I'm just the same as uh, all you guys. Um, feels like just having a few beers with mates. And that's what I keep telling people. This is what I want the show to be about because some people whinge about it being, um, you know, long and sort of winded or whatever but like i said this is like a group of mates sitting around a table having a chat about some camera rumors and news and things like that i mean i was the original one that did this um you know so you know it's it's i love it and, and you guys love it too if you don't like it well just don't watch uh, cheers everyone um david must have forgotten his corona no for some reason when i turned it on it locked i don't know why um so i'm not sure what happened to it? So I had to quit everything and re come back in. So um, Mod said films and photos. Mark said having the G bug. Um, Benjamin said looking for his bottle opener. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, tardiness is not a virtue. Not for me, no, Heath. I'm always late, aren't I? That's a problem. Joe said, I've just got my Tamron 17 to 28 2.8 on sale. I bought it for the new Sony A74, but it isn't released yet. Uh, like, like, why are you selling it? Uh, you don't like the... Oh, you, or you just... Because it's not out, you, you're just selling it while you wait. Because that's a great lens, that Tamron. Um, I'm glad I shoot wildlife. I would go nuts trying to figure out what small primes to get. Uh, I'm going to talk about this today, uh, so I'll, I'll talk about that. Mark said, I own that lens. It's too long for my work. Uh, oh, he's talking about the one. Oh, no, I love the 135. Oh, I, I just never take that off. In fact, I think I'm going to show you an image with it. No, I'm not, uh, but I will in the coming days. Um, oh, there might be one there. I'll have to have a look. What else have we got? I will have the trio of these uh, before the camera is released. Uh, Raymond said, while these new lenses look interesting, I don't want to go back to the 49 millimeter filters. I know, what a pain. That's what I love about the Tamron lenses. You know how the filters are all the same. That's so good, uh, having that. Besides, my pre-order for the 1.250 millimeter is already breaking my bank. I decided um, breathing. Oh, I should. Oh, I haven't got my thing in here. I, I, so I broke my 55 the other day. Um, I wonder if I've got a photo. Let me just open up photos and see if it goes in there. If not, I'm going to run and get my phone because I'll show you. You get a lot. I'll run and get it, and I'll just show because I've got to show you. Stay there. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh.
All right. Let me just see if I can transfer it to my computer so I can show you a bit better because you, you're going to laugh. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Where are we? Uh, go. Let me go airdrop. All right, let me see if I can send it to myself. And David's Mac Mini. Is it gone? Let me check. Yes, I think it, yes, it has. <laughs> Just wait till you see it and I'll tell you what happened. Here we go. Hang on. Let me open it up. All right. Let me go to here. <laughs> so this is it. This is my poor 55. Look at it. It's just. Oh, I nearly died. Look, I did this at the wedding the other day and I pretended like it didn't bother me. What happened was I was filming. So I am doing a, a, one of my fusion video things, but I was using the Ninja V and um, I was had it on the A7 III, I think, um, and I was recording. But the stupid thing was I thought, well, I'll try this for the first time just using a monopod. <laughs> And so I left it go for a second and it was top heavy because of the Ninja V sitting on the top and it just fell over and it went bang onto the floor and the whole back of the lens um, popped off. Um, so I've had to send it in uh, for repairs, uh, but it's only, it's $450 to repair and I've got it on insurance. So I've only got to pay 250 bucks. So it's w certainly worth uh, fixing. So <laughs> That was what happened. I thought, oh no, you know, that's, I love that lens. It's, um, it's one of my favorite little lenses and I love it for video particularly. Uh, I don't think I'll ever do that again. I've often used that, um, you know, like the uh, monopod with just a camera on it and it's fine. Uh, but with the Ninja V on the top, it was just too top heavy because it was leaning a fraction forward and it, um, it fell down. But uh, I sent it off to Sony Alpha Pro support. Uh, they got back to me yesterday and they obviously said everything's okay. They've just got to uh, fix the back part of the lens. Uh, so I can't wait to get it back. So <laughs> I just thought I'd give you a laugh with showing you that. The other thing I'm going to do too, a video review soon, is look at this. See this little light meter through here? You should see how you can use this to uh, get your color balance on your Sony cameras for video and stills. I'm going to do a video on it because this is awesome just wait until i take you through that so that was that was a good start today kerry just rolled her eyes again as usual you know give me the big i just thought thank god it was not my 135 or the 24 or even the baddest because like they're the ultimate lenses that i use all the time and if i broke one of those oh, i would have died so that was the good start to a wedding uh, now, I'll show you also a couple of images that I took from there. Well, one image. Let me show you one of these. Um, where are we? All right, so let me just show you this one. So this is a couple of things that I just did, but let me reduce this down so you can have a look. These are all shot with the A7S III. I love that camera. I really do love it. Uh, let me just come back here. So you can see that here, um, it's, it's just just beautiful. I, I just love it. I love the rendering. I love the focusing of this. Uh, so you can see that there. Uh, you can see everything else going on as well, but it doesn't matter. Um, so this is beautiful. Jasmine's stunning, and I can't wait to release a few more of her. Um, if we look at this other one that I've got too that I took as well, um, that's this image here. Um, this was shot bright daylight, believe it or not. So this is my editing that's brought it up to this type of result. Uh, so I've basically exposed to give me this edit. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, basically light her up like she was lit up by these lights. Um, I might talk about this in the photography videography school or something. But um, yeah, this was bright daylight because I'd love to show the before and after because you'll freak if you saw the result before how this looked. Um, but I had this in my mind and I had to use the flash and expose for this. Uh, often I do shoot for what I'm going to edit so I know what I'm going to edit. But, but this was with the A7S III as well. Uh, that camera is just nuts. Uh, it really is uh, crazy. I don't think I had any others um, in there. Let me just check. Um, no, I think that was all. Oh, this was the other one that I did be the A7S III, but I think I've showed you that one before. Uh, that was another one uh, that I did as well. So I'm starting now to process them um, a lot now, and I'm, I've got used to using the camera and everything else. Uh, it's, it, it, 
It's brilliant. Even though it's only 12 megapixels, I'm going to talk about resizing the images actually as one of the stories today. So we're going to go through that as well. But it is so good. I mean, it really is an amazing still camera. And in fact, the second we get to say um, the, the wedding ceremony or the reception, it's all I want to use because the file sizes are unbelievable. The low light is terrific. Uh, and you keep your file size down because no one ever blows reception photos up that big. And if they did now, uh, like I said, I can get up to 16 by 20 um, without a problem. But now with Gigapixel and the new pho uh, Photoshop uh, enlargement process that I'll talk about soon, excuse me, b -burp, um, it print size is not an issue. Um, so it's, it's just amazing. Uh, let's keep going down um, just before we go to the first stories because there's not a heap to talk about today, but there's a, a lot of things on interesting about lenses and other stuff that, you know, you may find interesting. You have a picture. Oh, didn't we have sound on that one? Oh, great. Shame about your Sydney dates. Uh, I will be there next week. Yeah, 24th, um, I'm there. Um, ben said, cheers. I have sound. Oh, some did have sound. That's weird. Um Greetings, David. Just got the Tamron 70 to 180 for $100 off. That's great. It's a great lens. I seriously am thinking about selling my 70 to 200 f4 because it doesn't work with my a7s3. Uh, it blanks out the screen. Oh, thank you so much, Long Rider. He gave me a donation uh, down the bottom. Thank you so much, mate. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm seriously thinking about selling that. And even if I don't get enough to pay for the 70 to 180, well, it'll get me close. Um, so... I think I might do that uh, in the coming weeks. Um, Kerry used it the other day to do a wedding and it, it was blanking out on the screen. It probably needs a firmware update. Whether they'll do it though, because it's such an old lens now, I don't know. Works great with all the other uh, cameras, but not with the A7S III. So it probably is the same with the A1 as well. Um, he said, please stand by. Leslie said, hi all, bit late with the hat, David with the hat. Yeah, it's because I've got sunspots being burnt off. I had dry ice and my head looks a mess. Um, so I'm keeping them off, um, keeping the hat on. Um, Tony said, just ordered the A1 myself. Congratulations, Tony. Well, I'm going to have a little discussion about that today. Um, Benjamin will do that. Um, the 55 should polish up fine. Yeah, it'll be fine once it's fixed. And uh, Sony Alpha Pro Support or Sony Pro Support are great. Um, so they'll give it a full test. I had the same thing happen with me on a monopod. The gimbal took all the damage and protected my camera at the time. Oh, um, Happy again. The bride should be pleased. Outstanding job. Thank you so much. Uh, Raymond, I know you love the JPEG and HEVC images, but do you do RAW too? It, I only, look, I do shoot JPEG and RAW, um, but I only really edit the RAWs. Uh, look, the thing is with weddings, particularly like that image that I wanted to show you then, I knew that there was going to be a hell of a lot of post-processing on that. Uh, so I, I do shoot the RAWs. If the JPEGs are terrific, uh, and they're spot on with exposure and don't need any work, I'll usually use the JPEGs. But I always do do JPEG and RAW. Uh, and just in case, if I look through the JPEGs and they need a lot of work, I'll then go back to the RAWs. Because the JPEGs, uh, particularly in the A7S III, are gorgeous. And they'll be the same in the A1 uh, as well. Um, so I really like the look of them. So if I can, I'll use JPEG. But I always, always take RAW uh, every single time. Um... Do you still like the Sony 24? Yeah, I adore that lens, Rocco. It's more, It's probably the most used lens that I've got. I keep that on one camera for the whole wedding. Um, it's it's amazing. Um, so sharp. Focus is fantastic. Love the focus ring. I love everything about it, really. Uh, I know you don't care for the 7200G, but I love it. No, Tony, it's a great lens. It's. Uh, I just don't want to be lugging around that sort of weight. That's why I'd like the 70 to 180. Plus, I think Sony will probably be uh, doing another version of that fairly soon as well. All right, so let's go start going through some news um, because I wanted to take you through some of this. So I wanted to first talk about this Photoshop upscaling because uh, it's an interesting concept. And I've looked at a few video reviews down there. Uh, and I know Adobe was really, fl you know, sort of saying this is the best thing on earth. But from what I've seen myself in the testing, I should do a video about it. And I also saw this um, article in uh, Petapixel. It seems like Gigapixel overall does a little bit of a better job. But uh, I thought I'd show you some samples and I'll, I'll talk about where um, I probably would use the Photoshop version more than Gigapixel. I have Gigapixel, uh, but it is incredibly slow. So let's go down and have a look. 
Um, so there's this whole article. I'll stick the links down here because I'm not going to go through everything. I'm just going to sort of talk to you about the images and show you the images um, because they have done an A7S III in a lot of these um, tests that they've sort of done through here. And what they're saying is, you know, you're going from this original up from here up to this uh, larger size now with uh, this ability to do it in Photoshop um, and also using Gigapixel. And it's this a camera raw, it's called super resolution. Uh, down here, you'll see it's called that. So it's this super resolution that you've got. Um, whereas Topaz have this thing called Gigapixel. And on one also have one. I've got all of them actually. Um, but I, I think I've found that Gigapixel does the best type of job. Also, you've got a lot more control with Gigapixel, but I'll, but it's not much. So I'll show you these images now. YouTube may not pick much of this up uh, in detail, but it certainly will give you the ability um, to, say, use something like an A7S III. And if, if you're shooting 12 megapixel and you want to upload those or make them bigger, like for a really large print, you can really do this without a problem. Um, with this, these uh, abilities now to enlarge the uh, the image. Now you could always do it with sampling before in Photoshop, but sampling was not that good. It was a little bit blurry and stuff. But I'll show you that because they compare all three. Um, this is another one where they're just showing how that the systems work. Like I said, I'm not going to show you the whole lot, but this is the enhancer preview in Photoshop, and then I'll also show you Gigapixel. I think they show that uh, as well. Uh, and then he starts to, oh, this is Gigapixel here. Um, you've got much more controls that, that you can actually use uh, to come through. But but basically, uh, you'll see here that they're using a, um, I think there they're saying a 2.1 megapixel Sony A7S III. So I don't know why it would be that. I think that's meant to be 12 um, because that's what it gives you. And then they've, up, they've basically enlarged them and doing it. Now, here's some samples. So this is the first one, which is the Bald Eagle. Um, and then they've blown it up so you get this sort of size. Now, this is super resolution up top here, and then this is gigapixel. Uh, like I said, I don't think um, YouTube is going to show it that well, but like I said, I'll leave the link down below and you can have a look uh, yourselves. Now, this is straight out of what it does. Now, it's look, it's not as sharp as what the original obviously is, but... To get a starting point, this is incredible. Now, once you've got that starting point, then you would have to add other things like extra sharpening and things like that. In some cases, though, you don't. Um, but it's still incredible when you look at what it does. Now, this is the normal Photoshop scaling. If you, uh, you can sort of see that the feathers and stuff in the eyes are just not as sharp as, say, the super resolution. And then Gigapixel gives you an even slightly better uh, result. In the, in this example here, you've got the owl that's in the background there, and then they've blown it up. It, it really is incredible what you can do, though, uh, with these. Sometimes Gigapixel can be a little bit hard, uh, and that's what I found. If you're not careful about how you can control the settings, it can sort of give you aliasing and, you know, halos and things like that. So you do have to be careful, um, whereas super resolution tends to be okay all the time. Uh, and they also mentioned down here about times, too, so I'll, I'll wait till I see that. But this is the scale version, super resolution, and the gigapixel. Um, gigapixel, to me, always looks a fraction better in these tests that they're doing through here. Uh, this is this little hooded, whatever it is, Merganza or something, I don't know. Uh, but you can see um, here, super resolution does a pretty good job when you're looking at that original here. Um, and if we scroll down, you know, that's an amazing result you're getting from um, that tiny file size. And then you can see the three of them uh, here. And to me, like I said, again, it looks to me like the Gigapixel one is just slightly sharper, but it's nothing that you couldn't edit in the super resolution to give you the same result of, as what you're getting uh, there as well. Um, I'm just trying to see down here. You can see the little bird through here. Uh, and then you can see how it's enlarged up through here. Uh, it's, like I said, it's unbelievable, really. Um, down here, you can sort of see, it, again, there's variations, and I still sort of think there's a big difference between the super resolution and the gigapixel. Uh, you can see that there too. Uh, and this one really shows you the detail. So you're looking at the this bird here, um, and if you look at the detail that you're getting uh, with the super resolution and then uh, the gigapixel, the gigapixel one here there may be a little bit of aliasing though but um you know but they're both very very good uh, very very good now where did it mention about the time this was a wren flying um coming through um let me come down where it said about the um you can see detail here as well oh, power versus performance okay 
I think it said something like, um, oh, it's not there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was 10 minutes to do one of the processing. So what it was saying was one of these images took 10 minutes to do in Gigapixel. So Gigapixel is very, very processor intensive. I, I'm certain it doesn't use the graphics card. It only uses CPU. And in fact, the, Giga, the uh, Topaz um, plugins, like there's the Sharpen AI, there's the Noise Reduction one and Gigapixel are the only applications that I've ever used that force the fan to go like crazy on my M1 Mac. Uh, apart from that, I never, ever hear them come on. Uh, but the second I start to use those, it does bring the fan on. So, you know, they're, they're starting to push uh, the new A1s. Uh, they, the other two were updated yesterday, though, which was um, the noise reduction one and sharpen AI. So they may be much better now. I don't know. Um, so there's a time factor in it. And I think he said the uh, super resolution took about 30 seconds or something like that. Uh, where So it's almost in real time. There's no waiting, whereas the gigapixel took 10 minutes. So if you look at it like that, I think that you're better off to be using, unless you really need ultimate control, the super resolution in Photoshop uh, Camera Raw, because the time saving alone is massive. Now, if, you, if it doesn't matter, and you're only doing one or two, I probably would use Gigapixel if you had it. Um, but I certainly probably wouldn't buy it now, seeing what you can get with super resolution, and then you could edit that a little bit later uh, to, you know, to get a, a, a better result. But what it does mean, it means that if you haven't got a really high-end image uh, or a high-resolution image, that you can now use these programs to give you more breathing space if you do want to crop, for instance, or if you wanted to, say, shoot a larger print. So that that's terrific. And like I said, for me now particularly, I honestly think at the moment if I was going to buy another camera, I would get another A7S III um, because I just adore that camera. I love the file size that comes out of it. Uh, I love the dynamic range. The focus is just awesome and the EVF is to die for. Um, and I probably would buy another A7S III tomorrow because the way I'm starting to shoot resolution with what they're starting to get to the like imagine what it's going to be like in two years um the resolution that you can now get from say using ai to upload these is just awesome um so yeah i mean tony i agree look if you're used to the a7r4 and you crop uh, you may notice a difference see for what i shoot which is events work um particularly even when I'm doing my portraits, uh, like outside and stuff, the 12 megapixel is ample. Remember now, most of the work that I show is now for social media. Uh, and brides and grooms will probably only print one or two prints. I do give them a photo album, but 12 megapixels is, is ample for whatever you would put in a, uh, in a normal uh, photo album. So for me, it doesn't make any difference. Look, if you're doing high-end fashion, yes, of course, because you need the resolution to do the full-on retouching and things like that. But for what I'm doing particularly, 12 megapixels is ample. Uh, and I'm very, very comfortable with shooting that now particularly, and you get the low light advantage as well. Uh, it, it's just brilliant. I, I just love it. And I've, you know, it's amazing in the um, video as well. So if anyone is thinking about that particularly and you're not sure if 12 megapixels is enough, well, I've just showed you images I've taken and that's ample to, six, to print up to 16 by 20 as they are um, without any problem at all. If you want to go bigger than that, well, then you could use something like, you know, the this new uh, resolution increase software to, to give you more resolution. But I don't really do that much anymore. I mean, canvases, you could probably, I could probably take the um, a7S3 up to 20 by 30 because you use less resolution. You know, you can get by with 200 DPI. Uh, so, yeah, I just thought I'd talk about that. Um, hope you found that interesting. I'll come back to the chat at the end so we can go through everything. Um, now, the Sony uh, 50mm 1.2. I just wanted to talk about a couple of things on this because... This, this is an amazing lens. It's not one that I'm going to get. Uh, and there's a reason why I, look, I've got the 55 and I'm completely happy with that. Um, the other thing too for me is I wouldn't use it that much. Like I said, my main images or the main lenses I use are the 24, the 85, and then the 135. I prefer that real focal length. I mean, there's a lot of shooters love 50 mil and that's all they would do. And this is unbelievable if you want to do that. The still focus breathing I've seen, uh, so it still is an issue. Um, there's not much you can do about that, though, I suppose, unless you want to get a, you know, a cine lens or something like that. But um, 
If you're into still photography, th this is as good as you would like to get if you were shooting um, with Sony. I mean, it's brilliant if you love that 50 mil uh, focal length. Uh, well made, light. You know, I mean, if you look down here, you can see the difference in the uh, scale of this. If you look here, this is the Sony, that's the Canon, and that's the Sigma. Uh, it's it's massively, um, well, particularly against the Sigma, it's so much smaller. But let's look at the differences. Now, it's comparing it to the Canon, it's $300 cheaper, so that's decent money. And it's also uh, 178 grams lighter, uh, 2.8 millimeters tighter, and it's five millimeters less in the thrill, uh, filter thread. So this is, you know, great if you're putting this on a gimbal or something like that, or, or lugging it around all day, you know, it makes a massive difference. Uh, you've got the 11 aperture blades instead of the 10 on the Canon, has the aperture ring, which I love particularly for video. Uh, weather resistant, has much faster autofocus, and the focus is dead silent. All the new Sony lenses are dead silent. Uh, compared to the Nikon 1.2, it's $100 cheaper. It's 312 grams lighter. Um, is that, so is that the Nikon or is that the, no, I think that's Sigma, I think. Um, does it say? No, I'm pretty sure that's the Sigma, though it looks like it to me. Oh, it's Nikon, perhaps it is a Nikon. Um, so compared to the Nikon, it's $100 cheaper, 312 grams lighter, 42 millimeters shorter. I mean, that's a lot. Uh, 2.5 time millimeter tighter, 10 millimeter less filter size. You know, it's a lot. Uh, 11 blades instead of Nikon's nine, has an aperture ring, has much better auto fo focus and focus is silent. So, you know, it really, Sony, I don't know, they're, they're doing some voodoo stuff with their lenses at the moment. They, they really are just doing amazing things. Like if I was in the market to get a 50 mil, I would probably jump at that in a heartbeat if I had the money. Um, but like I said, I, I just don't need it at the moment because I, I love my 55. But one day I might get it. Like if perhaps if my 55 couldn't have been repaired, I may have got that. Um, but it, it was repaired, so I just don't need it. The amount of time that I use 50 mil, like I said, is not that often. So uh, 95 just gave me a donation too. Thanks, buddy. Um, he said there, my dream lens is the 50, <laughs> 50 GM, thank heavens, yeah. And it will be for a lot of people. Like a lot of people love that 50 millimeter focal length. Uh, pair that up with the 24 GM and that lens. And <laughs> gee, I know. So that's talking about the 50 mil. Now, I wanted to go through you with these other lenses um, that have come up um, because, look, I'm not sure about having these for stills, and I'll, and I'll talk about that uh, as we go on, but there's three lenses that have been released. Um, so there's obviously the new 50, but then there's the 40, uh, 50, 24, and 40 and the 24 lenses uh, that have come through. And there's a whole stack of information that you can read here. I'm not going to go through it all because uh, it's too much, but I'll leave the links down below and you could have a look. Um, but basically what they are, they're a G lens. Uh, let me just go through these little bits here because it'll tell you the 50 mil 2.5 G. That's an unusual um, f-stop. I'm not sure why they did that, but um, it's a 40... Uh, sorry, 50 mil 2.5 G and the 40 mil is also 2.5 G. Minimum focus distance of um, 0 0.35 um, millimeter. It's 0 0.3, um, 0 0.3 millimeter if you go into manual focus. So you can get a fraction closer if you're in manual focus. Maximum magnification of uh, up to uh, 0.18 times. Um, which is, has a variety of shooting environments and subjects. So in other words, you can sort of do macro and also other stuff as well at the same time. Uh, I just don't know. Look, high quality reliability. Um, they, they they are made very very well. Uh, if you look at that, uh, fast precise autofocus, so it's very very quiet um, as well. Now let me just show you a couple of things before I discuss this. Uh, here's the lenses themselves, and I'll show you more images in a second. Um, this is a size comparison. Uh, there's a Sigma here, but I th I'm not sure if that's got the lens cap on. I don't think it does. Uh, this is the Sigma 45, the Sony 24, and the Samyang uh, 24. Um, let me go over here and show you some images of these. So this is how they all look. Now, the build quality looks terrific. Um, you've got the, obviously, a button that you can put to focus or whatever else you'd like. You've got the AF and MF manual focus uh, here. And you've also got your, your um, aperture ring as well. Um, 
and they were all built the same way. So these are G-series lenses, and I've found the G-series lenses are usually really, really good. Um, they're just a little bit of a step down. And in fact, sometimes you'd never notice the difference, but um, they are built very, very nicely, and they're very, very small on your camera. I think these lenses, though, are more for videographers. Um, I really do. And like I said, if I was buying these, I would use them for video in a heartbeat because they'd be great on a gimbal, particularly you've got the aperture ring that's on there, they're nice and small, uh, etc. Um, but if I was doing this for stills, now look, I'm, I'm guessing, because remember, I know some people are going to say, you haven't got them, you haven't tested them, I know that, and I, and I uh, may get them one day, but I have tested the Tamron lenses that are similar focal lengths, and they are way, way, way cheaper. I think for photography, I probably would buy the Tamrons. Um, if it was for videography, I think uh, I would definitely get the Sony lenses, um, particularly for the things like I've, I've said, I've showed you, which is that aperture ring, uh, you know, et cetera. Um, so if you were doing Fusion, I would buy the, the Sony, uh, Sony definitely, because you've got the ability to have the better stills uh, and also the better video, I mean, um, particularly with the, those features. It's great to be able to switch from manual to autofocus just with the switch without doing anything else. Uh, and it's also great to change your aperture and use, uh, you know, the, the button, uh, the, the programmable button for whatever you'd like to use it for as well. So that's a, a great feature. If I was doing stills alone, I probably would look at the Tamron. Uh, if I was doing Fusion, I would get the Sony, and if I was doing video, I would definitely get the Sonys. I think these are fantastic, brilliant if you do Fusion. If you are a videographer at all, these are fantastic. And, you know, the 24 would be brilliant on a gimbal. Uh, it would be amazing uh, to have, you know, such a, a, a lightweight, tiny lens that you've got all those abilities to switch to manual focus and everything else. So I think Sony is probably on a winner here. Like I said, it's, it's not something that I'm going to buy because I, I just, like I said, I like my 24 uh, GM uh, and then I'll, I would jump up to the 55. But if you are in the marketplace for something a bit cheaper, they're around $600, I believe. Um, it's good value. I mean, these are good value for people that can't afford the GM lenses. These are great value, uh, really good value. value. But I, I, like I said, I would personally uh, have a look at the Tamron as well. Uh, and compare them, you know, go to the store and then say, can I have a look at the Tamron and see how that performs? Um, and then compare it to what the Sony G cameras uh, give you as well, because the, the Tamrons are dirt cheap. You know, they're probably, they'd be half the price of these. So have a think about it anyway. I just wanted to talk about that. There goes my Sony sponsorship again. <laughs> I oh, love it. Uh, another lens that's coming out too, I'll come back to the chat too, guys. Another lens too that's coming out uh, is the Lauer 33. So this is a 0.95 E-mount lens. So this is going to be an APS-C lens. Uh, this looks really quite interesting. Um, because it will be manual focusing though, that's something that you've got to understand. But these lenses are always built beautifully, uh, as long as you don't mind manual focusing. Um, they're not giving prices at this stage, I don't think. They're saying it's going to be 590 grams, uh, and it's going to be available for Sony E, Fuji, Nikon, and Canon EF mount, uh, supported formats APS-C. So it's not a full-frame lens, it's an APS-C lens, I think they're saying. Um, so that's one lens that they're saying will be released in late April. So if you like that sort of 35mm focal length, what would it be, around a 50 on a full-frame? Um, now, DP Review, this is interesting because they brought out a whole discussion talking about, oh, thank you, 95, just gave me another donation. Um, what's that one? I want both these 50s and the 85 1.2. Tell you what, they better not release an 85 1.2 because I'll be in big trouble. Um, I really will be. Oh, I, I dread that because at least it doesn't, I'd be so jealous if people start buying that and I can't get it. And a 200. That'd be a monster F2. That'd be amazing as well. Uh, thanks for the donation, mate. Um, so this is really interesting because do you remember, and the people that have followed me for a while, love it too, guys, if you give me a thumbs up. It just lets other people know I'm live. Um, the... Um, do you remember ages ago I was talking about 8K and everyone was bagging me by saying, ah, oh, it'll never be used, you never want to use 8K and all this sort of stuff. I remember Ike, if he joins us, he knows because he was one that was saying it all the time. 
Uh, and I was saying it it's not true. I, I was basically saying that, yes, it does have an advantage if you want to downsample your camera, your footage, or you want to future-proof your footage. Now, I couldn't shoot 8K because I've got nothing, no way to store it. I mean, it's it, for me personally, I would not want to use it at this stage. But there are benefits. And you know that if you shoot Sony, because if you shoot, um, say, with the A6400 or even the A7 III, you get a much better result if you shoot in 4K and then downsample to 1080p. Uh, the 1080p is a little bit soft. So if you shoot 4K and then downsample it, you get a lovely result. That's why I was always uh, going on at Sony about bringing in 4K60, because then I could shoot 4K and downsample it if I wanted to, and still be able to slow it down. It's the same if you shoot 8K, because uh, they're saying in this here that the footage they're getting, they have done some 8K downscaled. Like I said, I'll leave this in the review so you can have a proper look at how it is. But they're saying you definitely get an advantage of shooting 8K and then downsampling it to 4K. It's sharper, um, and they're talking about that in this whole article. You can have a look, and I'd love to know down below what you think about this. Um, so have a look at it, and uh, tell me in the comments later, you know, if you think it's it's sort of worth it. For me, at the moment, probably not, but I can see where it's going in the future. Uh, the main advantage of this is you could shoot in 8K, and then you could, say, use uh, 4K, and then you could blow it up. Uh, and have multiple images or angles from that footage. I do that all the time if I'm shooting in 4K and I output at 1080p. So if I could shoot, say, 8K and then output at 4K, I'd still have that ability to go up to, you know, 200 whatever percent. Um, so it really does give you that look if you've got multiple cameras uh, working. So it would be great in that regard. I just wouldn't like to have the storage. Um, you know, and it's also going to be, you'll need a fairly big processor to sort of do this. But, but the main advantage of having the 8K is that in two years time, it's probably going to be the standard. And then, so if you bought the A1 now, um, you've got a camera that is future-proofed. And that's one big advantage about, say, getting something like the A1, uh, because the video is so good uh, in that camera and it's great for stills too. Like I said, if I had the money, I'd love to buy one. Uh, just can't afford it, but I'm happy with the A7S III. Um, but uh, it's something to think about. But there is a definite advantage if you can handle the file sizes and uh, you can handle the storage. 8K is the future, and it's probably the way it's going to go. Also, I've, I've discussed with you before that I think grabbing stills off an 8K camera is going to be awesome. Um, so it's going to be terrific to sort of see that. Um, let me keep going. Sigma. <laughs> talk about this this is the sigma fpl uh was unveiled i just don't understand this camera i really don't do not understand it uh, it's too small uh, i've looked at it and it's just way too small um for a video camera um but there's other things about this that are just weird um, I'll show you. Let's come down and have a look. It's got um, the design. Oh, I don't know. I don't even think there's a big enough grip to hold on to this. But, you know, there's no grip there on this side, really. Um, so it's going to be clunky to hold. Um, no, I don't know. It just doesn't do anything for me, really, at all. There's, you know, you have to buy an EVF that's extra. But the price, if you put the EVF on, puts it up about the same price as the A7R4. It's probably the same sensor as the A7R4 as well. Uh, because it's a 60 odd megapixel, so I think it's exactly the same. Uh, it does support, uh, support USB charging. Um, where's the EVF that you attach? Now, it's it only does 8-bit. This is what I cannot understand. If you want to get anything bigger than 8-bit, um, it does say 10-bit, but I think most of the things that you record inside are 8-bit. Uh, you have to go external if you want to get uh, anything larger than that. Um, what else? It only does 4K 30 frames uh, per second, so that's a real bummer as well. Um, it's got, uh, it does have two dual card slots, which is good, uh, and you can record to an SSD, which is nice as well. This is the EVF that you can attach to this, um, which is cool. I mean, it, it obviously points down, so you can use it like the, you know, the way that they used to sort of hold it like this, where you'd uh, sort of look down and stuff. That's really nice. It, so it must pivot on this section through here. I mean, that's really nice. But the problem is that when you attach this, then you lose the ability to use an external monitor because it goes on that side. It doesn't have the ports anywhere. So you attach it here. Um, but the ports are all on this side. So you can't do anything with those ports whenever you're using the EVF. 
I don't know. It's just, it's $2,499 and it's $3,000 with that EVF. I, I think looking at it, I watched Gerald Undone this morning and the rolling shutter is the worst rolling shutter he's ever seen in his life and he showed it and it looked terrible. It, it really, really looked terrible and I don't understand why any videographer would ever want to use this. The colour looked bad. I mean, it was awful. Um, I don't know why they bothered at all. It's, I don't know. It, it's just, anyway, <laughs> I just thought I'd show you that. Last story before we open up to Q&A. Uh, is the camera Japanese market have just released um, their latest sales and they're showing that Sony is uh, still moving up. Uh, and, you know, it's it's interesting because they really are, they're just doing everything right at the moment, aren't they? You think that they've released the A7S III, they've released the, um, what is it, the uh, RX3, is it? No, hang on, MX3. Uh, and they've also released a bucket load, they've released the A1, and a bucket load of lenses. So boy, have, have they, I originally said, boy, they've stopped innovating, but at the moment, <laughs> they've gone nuts. Um, and I think, just wait till the a7 IV comes out. Once the a7 IV comes out, this thing is just gonna skyrocket. Because remember, that would be, I suppose with the a6 400, it's probably the two best selling cameras or the a6 300. Uh, so when they bring out the a7 IV, this is going to go nuts because I know a lot of people are waiting for that camera uh, to be coming out. Fuji are also doing pretty well here uh, as well. They're at least gaining market share. But the two, you know, the, Canon is losing a little bit, um, and, but it's going down. And uh, Olympus is just diving and they're in real trouble. Um, so, you know, it, but either way, uh, all of us Sony users, and I know most people that join this chat, particularly are Sony users, uh, Sony are just doing everything right at the moment. They, they really are. And I, I, you can't fault what they're sort of putting out at this stage. So yes, it's unusual to bring out an A7 III and the, uh, the um, RX3. Um, or is it the RX? I always get confused. There's so many numbers. But those cameras do have a difference uh, in how you'd like to use them. So um, FX, I mean, yeah, it's FX3. Uh, they, they do have a difference in their usage. So I think they probably did a, a good thing there that, you know, a lot of people may have wanted that attachment on the top, which you can use for your XLR microphones and stuff like that. So that's great. They'd like the ability to be able to just screw things into the body. Uh, I personally wouldn't get that because I love the EVF so much. Uh, that's why I still think the A7S3 is a much better buy, but it depends on your usage. It really does. Um, now that we've got a Cinetone on, on those top three cameras, uh, that's going to be fantastic. I'm sure we're going to get a Cinetone um, on the a7 IV, but at least now, uh, if you uh, follow that thing I discussed a while ago, you can get those settings in the a7 III as well, um, RX Studios or whatever it was that he put up. Um, so that's one thing now you can get them to match the whole way through. Um, but S Cinetone is beautiful, and it's certainly something that I'm going to use a, a lot over, you know, in the coming years because it's a great straight out of camera profile. Um, so I think Sony of doing fantastic and I just cannot wait to see what we get in the a7 IV because I think the a7 IV is going to blow everything out of the market the longer they take to bring that out the more we'll get in that camera because they will have already made their sales on the a1 they will have already made their sales on the a7s3 and the fx3 so if that comes out late in the year I just cannot think what that camera is going to offer remember when the a7 III came out and blew the a7 uh S2 out of the water, basically, apart from the really high ISO. So I think you're going to find that the a7 IV is going to be an unbelievable camera. Just wait. I, I really am picking that thing to be unbelievable. And I can't wait to see what they offer with that one. So, you know, it's very, very exciting times now if you're a Sony user. They just need to say... Um, they just need now to update a few of their lenses. They need to update the 85. Uh, that's got to be hopefully go now to a 1.2 and it has to have the new linear motor. So that, that's a lens that has to be updated. So, you know, that, that's important. I think Sony knows that and that will come out. Um, I would think that'll come out reasonably soon. Um, the 70 to 200 definitely needs an update. It's slow focusing and you can see that if you shoot with the A1. Uh, it's, it 
does slow uh, that camera down. So they may improve it with a firmware update, but I think they probably need the linear motors in that to keep up with uh, that camera. So we're going to see an update of the uh, Sony 70 to 200 and the Sony uh, 2470 uh, has to be updated as well. And I'm personally waiting on something like a 12 millimeter or a 40 millimeter um, G lens or a GM lens. That would be brilliant too. It's really the only thing that's lacking is, is a really wide angle lens from Sony. Um, you know, and it's going to come eventually, but we, we're still waiting. So, you know, I think it's anyway, either way, you just can't complain. I mean, I mean, you cannot complain about what Sony are giving us at the moment. That's for sure. Um, so let's go over to Q and a and, uh, have a chat. So far away guys, if you have any questions, like I said, it's going to be a little bit, although we've nearly been on an hour. It's got, it goes quick. Um, let me come down here. I'll read all those. Um, the earliest I've seen the A1 coming back in stock is April the 6th. Yeah, I checked here the other day and it was about that as well. Um, <clears throat> if you do Astro, you will love that lens. Yeah, the 24GM is it would be a great Astro lens. I don't do it, but it would be a great lens for that. G'day, Steve. Hey, Alex. Uh, Jaded Filmmakers here. Hi. Um, Subscribe to him, guys, too, if you uh, <clears throat> hop over to his channel because it's, it's terrific. It's good comedy as well as uh, reviewing gear. I keep <laughs> doing be uh, beer burps. Uh, Benjamin said, I changed my mind, cancelled my A1 order and ordered the FX6 as I mainly do wildlife video. Yep, cool. Uh, I just don't do enough photos to make up for the price as I uh, can use the FX6 for my client work as well. Well, it, it makes sense, Ben. The, the FX6 uh, is a great camera. Uh, you'll love it. I mean, it really is a good camera. And if you don't do photos, I can totally understand that. Um, not sure if I will regret it. I don't think so. If you're only doing video, uh, Ben, I don't think you will at all. Um, 95 said so 14 likes. Yeah, hopefully uh, I'll get some more likes. It does make a difference to me, guys. Um, remember, I'm not sponsored. Definitely not by Sony. <laughs> uh, anyone tried the video on A1 compared to the A7S III or the FX6? Uh, well, I, I, when I get the A1, I will do that, Ben. Um, like I said, I was meant to be doing something Sunday, but I can't because it's my anniversary. So uh, when I test the A9, I will do a video test as well. I, I want to test it against the A9. I also want to test it against the A7S III. So stay tuned because uh, I will do that when I uh, get my hands on that camera. Um don't forget to like. The hat alone is at least worth the look. I love it. I tried super resolu resolution on wildlife. Could see, uh, could not see any difference. So you're saying it worked good. Oh, that's interesting. If Gary um, Woodrain was alive today, he'd soil himself with how far cameras and tech have come. No more fumbling with rolls of film and, and budgeting your uh, shot. I know. It, it, we're so lucky, aren't we? I can remember film. You had to be careful with every single shot that you take. And, you know, you used to do weddings and you'd use four rolls or something. Like, it's so funny now you think about it. Um I'm used to the A7R4, not sure I could go down to 12. And it's just a personal thing. Uh, I don't mind 12 at all, to be completely honest with you all. Tony, I feel the colors and photos are better with A7S3, but you can't crop uh, crop. that's the only side down, uh, only downside. Um, low light capabilities are why I like the A7S3, yeah, it's a much thing. 400,000 ISO is no joke. Basically season the duck, it does. As long as you expose correctly, it is unbelievable what you can get out of that. We did a wedding the other day and I shot late at night um, with some lights and stuff on and Kerry was looking on the back and she was going, wow. <laughs> it's just, it's freaky when you start to look at what that camera can do. Um, if you crop a lot, the A7S III is no good. I don't crop, very, very rarely do I ever crop. Um, these new cameras and lenses make night street photography a thing. Yep, they would be great for that. I agree. Um, my dream is the 50 millimeter GM. Uh, sometimes, but I'd love an R3 and R4's dynamic range. Um, but how many uh, 50 millimeters do we need? Want some affordable telephoto primes? Well, there are a few. I know it's like 35s. There's a lot of those as well. Um, yes, uh, these lenses are made for street in my eyes. I also think they're made for videography as well. I feel that Sony make uh, better, faster lenses for the price like the 35 1.8. That is a great lens, actually. 
Um, the new compact lenses are perfect street lenses. Plus, I think they will all have linear motors. I think probably nearly all the new ones uh, would, I would think. There's a big difference in how those lenses work. Uh, the linear motors are just so much faster. You will know if you use something like the 135. It's nuts. Um, look like um, gone mates for the A7 III owners. Uh, oh, you're talking about that other camera. Um, I want both the 50 and the 85 GM 1.2 <laughs> and the 200 F2. Um, an 85 1.2 is coming. I, I think so too. I, I think that we'll definitely get that in the future, maybe sometime this year. Um, 50 megapixels, 30 frames per second, silent shooting, priceless. Uh, Mark said, did I mention my adapted Canon 85 1.2 is great and the aperture is fantastic. The lens weighs more than, uh, than LED, but worth uh, the sacrifice. Uh, it weighs more than lead. Um, what else? I agree on 8K. Um, what else? Um, ben said they uh, they said the same when 4K. Uh, that's right. Now a lot of people shoot 4K. Now I shoot nearly uh, 4K all the time. Um, An A7S3. Uh, have you ever used 1080p to record, or would they um, with the same concept? Of, no, the A7S3 gives fantastic 1080p video. Uh, it's really good. Uh, the other one that I found too that I really love is the A9. Uh, the A9 uh, 1080p is much better than the other Sony cameras that I've had. It's something to do with that sensor. Um, but uh, the A7S III is brilliant uh, in 1080p. It's not like the A7 III. Um, oh, Ben said there, the 1080 on the Sony A7S III is the best I have seen. Uh, and you get the added bonus of a 35 millimeter crop and two times clear image zoom. Yeah, that's the problem. You don't get the clear image zoom on the A7S III if you are shooting in 4K. The sensor's not big enough. But if you shoot 1080p, you can then use that two times clear image zoom, which is really great because it, it's great quality. Uh, I don't think enough people use that uh, clear image zoom. I think it's fantastic. Uh, the 10, 240 is an NB <laughs> The Rambler looks like they uh, have a pass through on the port. Yeah, maybe. It could be. Um, the Sigma is a bizarre camera. What were they thinking? I don't know either. I really don't know what they were thinking. Uh, if you look at the viewfinder ad on the module, it has a HDMI port, for example. Uh, oh, does that have a uh, HDMI port? Oh, is that why you're saying it's got a pass through? Oh, okay. So the you're saying that the let me just come back to there. Does it does it show it? Uh, might be somewhere else. Yeah, they're not showing you. Oh, hang on. Yeah, they're not showing you the other side. It might be there. Perhaps that's it or something. So you're saying there's a pass through HDMI. Um, the other thing too is it's got the small HDMI on it. Once you go to the A7S III, you do not want. Um, they, you know, the smaller HDMI, the full size HDMI is unbelievable. Uh, let me just come back to here. Well, if it's passer, at least you can still use that. And well, that makes a, a, a difference. Um, what else have we got? Uh, 240p is a bit different and you shoot backlight that can cause people finding. Uh, yeah, 240p does make it. It's not, yeah, nowhere near as good as the 1080, obviously. I thought the A1 would be plentiful because of the price, but Sony can't build them quick enough. It's the problem. They're obviously selling a, a, a lot of them. This is just sales. All companies do it. Yeah, and the other thing too is they do hold back supply as well to build that sort of excitement, I think. Uh, so it is. Apple does it too. Apple will do it all the time. Uh, Sony, um been doing a lot of flexing lately they certainly have it's crazy I can't complain though that's for sure i ordered mine within the first 30 minutes and still missed the first ship out wow um joe said i meant to type earlier that i bought the tamron 7 into 28 in advance of the a7 full release but it was on sale you should just keep it uh, it's a great lens particularly if you've saved money on it joe um, I do all of my Astro with the 24 GM. It's, yeah, it would be amazing for that. If you use the focus limiter on the 20, uh, 2.8, 70 to 200, it's pretty damn fast. Uh, did wonders for my bird in flight shots. 
Um, I agree, Dave, the new lenses will be awesome for gimbal video work. Hopefully a 14mm uh, 2.8. I know that would be unbelievable. I'd love something like that to come out. Uh, it's the only lens now, I do use the 10 to 12, uh, but it's an APS-C lens, but you can, you can use it at 12 on full frame. I use that if I have to for going really, really wide. Um, but I would love like a 14, a 12 or a 14 millimeter native full frame Sony lens. That would be unreal. Uh, you know, little distortion, stuff like that. It'd be so good if they brought out a really good one. Um, just have to set up the ISO auto minimum SS to faster. Uh, yeah, I always do that anyway, particularly for Kerry who shoots aperture mode. I always put it on faster so it doesn't... Uh, Give a slow shot of speed. Um, no worries, mate. Uh, Long Rider said, I am friends with the manager of New York's biggest camera retailer. He told me Sony has sold more cameras in the last three months than all of the other brands combined. And I wouldn't be surprised. Just wait till the A7 IV comes out. <laughs> that thing is going to go nuts. Um, it's going to be crazy. Um, what else? Um Alex said, have you used the Zeiss 25? To no, I haven't, but I've, that is, I've heard that's a very good lens, though. Uh, the bigger the pixels on the A7S III suck in all the available light. They certainly do, and that's the, the one of the beauties of that. Like having that ability to, say, go to um, receptions or shoot in very low-light scenarios and pump up ISO is a wonderful thing to have. Like I said, as long as you expose, I don't mind noise actually, to be honest. I don't mind it, but particularly if it's controlled noise, it gives you that film look. And I think too many of us are obsessed with having, you know, like ridiculously clean and sharp images. And then it, it doesn't even look like, um, it looks like an iPhone image, in other words, you know, like it's, it's nice to have that look but you will certainly get a much nicer look with something like the a7s3 if you're dealing with low light conditions but i found just recently that you know doing it now for multiple i've done three weddings with it now uh the autofocus in the a7s3 is nuts i mean it's really just probably well, it's almost as, as good as my a9 it's probably just as good really um it's almost about the same so the autofocus is nuts the, the fold-out screen I adore, I know some of you don't like fold-out screens, but the fold-out screen to me is just the best thing ever, and that's why I would probably love to buy one again. Um, the results you get out of that camera with the bit depth and everything else and the, and the look of it gives you, and even with their Cinetone, is just superb. There's, I can't fault, I really cannot fault the A7S III. I can't fault it, and I don't think I'd be able to uh, fault the A1 either. Um, the FX... Um, three, you wouldn't be able to fault if that's what you wanted. I wouldn't buy that because it hasn't got the EVF. Uh, and I love the EVF, particularly here in Australia where it's so bright. I can't see the screen and that would be a problem. Um, so, I, you know, I, I would need the EVF. So the latest Sony cameras particularly that are coming out, you know, just wait till the A7 IV comes out. Just wait till we get a new A7R5 or something like that. Those cameras, uh, I mean, it's just going to be unbelievable. <laughs> so lucky we really are uh let me just finish up on a couple of these and then i'm going to go and get some lunch uh you don't want a digital film look you don't and that's the problem and too many people try to get that perfect look and this is why i'm saying it's it's nice to have a little bit of a softer look you know it's nice to have a little bit of noise in there um you know a lot of photographers i do a lot of photographers will add grain onto the image to make it not look so clean uh, so these are things that you can add. And what you want is a camera that gives you beautiful grain uh, when you are shooting a low light. And that's something like the A7S III gives you. Uh, it gives you a nice grain look to it. And like I said, I don't mind grain uh, as long as it's controlled and it's nice to look at. In fact, I think a lot of the time it helps. Um, I just got my EOS R6. Um, what, yeah, it's great. Uh, Stephen, the EOS R6 is a terrific camera. Like I said, we're all blessed, really. Uh, Nikon, Canon, uh, Sony shooters, um, Panasonic. Uh, they're all amazing, really. Um, A7 IV, hold my wallet. I oh, know. I just hope it doesn't come out soon because I can't afford it. Uh, and Ben said, I agree. All right, everyone. Uh, that's it for the show this week. Um, if you can... Um, like I said, please give me a thumbs up. It does, does make a difference for me particularly. Like I said, I'm unsponsored, so I don't have anyone that sponsors me or anything like that. Uh, so it makes a difference because it gets the channel out there. Um, I will be back at the normal time next week. Uh, I've got a wedding tomorrow. That's why we're a day earlier today. So next week we'll be back on the Friday night uh, in the US and, and Europe. Uh, it'll be Saturday morning in Australia. Um, 
So apart from that, everyone, uh, have a great weekend uh, and I hope you really uh, enjoy yourselves and stay safe. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.